This is Pete Moore on Halo Talks. Usually in NYC, but now on location, Scottsdale, Arizona, at the Promotion Vault, new corporate offices. I have the pleasure of having my two friends, Tom Hatton and Craig Cote, here from Mountainside Fitness. Uh, and it's been a wonderful journey for Tom. Uh, we've known each other since probably I got into the industry and when you had a, a few clubs out here. Yes. And, uh, and I lived out on Chaparral and Hayden back in uh, April of... 2000. So I've watched your growth. So um, what I want to talk about today is uh, have the audience here understand how you methodically have built the company and built the brand, built the team, and um, you know talk about some of your entrepreneurial ventures, how uh, Craig joined the business, and uh, and where we are today as you know the largest independent high end operator in Arizona. So welcome to the show, my boys. Thank you, Pete. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. So, so Tom, talk about how you were uh, you're in college and uh, you know decided to throw some of the money that you had, which was probably all of it, into the health club industry, which at the time probably sounded like a crazy idea. Yeah, I think that's exactly <laughs> true. I only had a couple thousand bucks at the time, and 22 year old college student. And boy, it's 1990 when I signed my first lease. So the industry, as you might recall, just didn't know what it wanted to be at that point. It hadn't grown up in any way, shape, or form. So it was easy for me to kind of have an entry, a low entry fee. Mm -hmm. into that deal and, and started a concept of how we ended up growing Mountainside over all these years, way back when, without all the noise that you see today. Okay. Sure. So, so as you were growing the company, uh, you know, you, you were personally guaranteeing leases and, yeah. and uh, you know, kind of doing it on your own and, and you were, you know, the brand basically was you, you know, back yes. in the day. So when did you kind of take the step and say, okay, look, I've got a business, I understand it, this is going to be my life's work and I got to build a team around you know, my, my dream. I think that really started in the late nineties because my partner growing the business wasn't, uh, was real estate. I didn't have an investor or a true partner. It was real estate. And that was based on needs to grow the company, mm -hmm. uh, buy some real estate, you know, do a sale lease back, take the money do another club. And that's the way it grew it. So you said the term methodically at the beginning, that's exactly true. And along the way we started building our brand, kind of our concept of delivering fitness. Um, and it was probably in 99, 2000, where I thought, you know, this is something I'll probably do for a while. I've been doing it for about nine years. And now we were kind of starting to get some wind at our sales and, and then it was off and run into what kind of concept we really wanted to be for the next 10 years or so. Got it. So as you kind of went through uh, from the beginning and said, okay, this is what the box looks like. Uh, this is what Mountainside represents. I know you started to get some new locations kind of around the, the, the new ring, the highway yeah. in, in Arizona when I was here. Used to be like a, a a toll road going up to like 51 or like a dirt road or something. Things, <laughs> have, probably, things have changed that's dramatically. That's probably true. Right uh, but, uh, and then you went into some other markets and then, and then came back to, to Arizona and, and retrenched and kind of really built a, a solidified team here. So maybe just talk about, you know, from your experience, yeah, I use this term experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. So you can have great experiences and you can kind of keep replicating those. And you can also kind of go and test out new markets and realize, hey, that experiment didn't necessarily work. Maybe it was based on the timing. Um, and I came back and now we're, you know, we're here and you, you got a great business. Um, so maybe talk about like what you learned from trying to go outside of this market and sure. then how strong it is to be here today. Well, you know, it was a great lesson because we learned a lot in that time and, and you use the term timing. And I think that was it. We decided and, and had no idea what was coming, but it was in kind of early 07 that we made the decision to grow in Colorado. And we were also growing here. Our brand was getting stronger. We were moving across the valley. Um, boxes were bigger, 40,000 feet. We were starting to locate them on eight corners, freeways, stuff like that. And we decided to go into Colorado and, and really like that market. And, and still to this day like that market. It was just ironic that we went in there and started opening our first stores right about 2008, late 2008. Yeah, so I was in uh, investment banking back then, so those <laughs> were not pleasant times. And no. Turn it on CNBC and watching like your friends carrying out like uh, file boxes with all their stuff. Uh, so yeah. those were those were tough times. But I, you know, um, they say that a banker's uh, view on the world is uh, is ten years forward and only five years back. So most people forgot about that already. Yeah, and I think <laughs> we tried to, but we had a good lot. We learned a lot as far as how to operate operate in different markets. I think that was a huge success story. It's funny that's kind of how Craig and my relationship grew. He was working for a developer out there as well as Arizona, and we were able to work on some projects there. And uh, he kind of got to see that happen in our expansion, how we attacked other markets, and then that kind of involved into our relationship and how he came into maybe one time 
talk about that for a second. Yeah. So, so Craig, you, you, well, you guys met just uh, to, is that back in 2007? Correct. Um, and, and uh, Craig and I graduated the same year of, uh, of college. So, uh, and you were the CFO at 29, which I, I wasn't. So, so give us your background and, and what you bring and, uh, you know, how this has evolved, uh, you know, 12 years later, we're here at the, you know, with the largest independent chain in, in your home state. Yeah. Well, thank you, Pete. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I, coming out of college, I was a banker and, and I cut my teeth in banking. And it, it, as, as you know, Pete, it, it's a great, great place to cut your teeth. Yep. Get out within 10 years and you'll get out, stay, and you'll stay for probably your whole career. Uh, getting into real estate development, I met Tom. We did build suits together. And I was able to be involved with Tom on site selection, entitlement, architect, building it. And then through the crash, uh, as Mount Side exited Colorado, and I got out of real estate development and actually back into the finance world doing sell leaseback financing. Tom and I were able to get back together doing some sell leaseback financing on mountainside units. Uh, we got very uh, creative and did new build financing on sell leaseback, which is somewhat difficult because a lot of sell leaseback is an existing unit, has proven its worth, sure. and an investor will buy it and lease it back, the tenant will lease it back for a number of years. Uh, we went into de novo sites and we were able to, with the company I was working for, which is a public REIT, finance the ground construct, the ground acquisition, construction, and a forward springing lease with Mountainside and it worked swimmingly. We did That's two great. of those together and through that process, you know, Tom and I were able to work very well together and uh, there was an opportunity to come on as the president at Mountainside, and I took that opportunity. So, um, so to be candid with our listeners, what did you think of the health club industry before you got into it? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever asked you that. <laughs> I, I never scratched the surface. I never looked to see how uh, what was below the one-inch uh, right. layer, and so I, I didn't know what I was walking into. Uh, I was lucky enough to work for a number of business leaders who taught me that attitude and energy will solve almost any problem. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just walked in day one with Tom and I said, all we're going to do is have a positive attitude and throw a lot of energy at all the responsibilities that he was able to give to me. And so I, I took that attitude with knowing nothing about the industry whatsoever. Gotcha. So, so when you got, when, when you guys aligned here um, and, and took over the, you know, the executive position here as, as Tom's partner, you know, there was an influx of all these low cost operators, you know, in the market. And I was reading a quote the other day that I found fascinating and it said like a lot of these industries, when, when somebody comes in and disrupts them, they say they move fast and they break everything. And I was just kind of stopped and I said, well, I think that's really interesting because they forgot that what the reason why we're in the health club industry is to get people results and to make them feel better, not to necessarily set up like a fitness equipment warehouse and they can come in at their leisure and we're going to go race to the bottom. So, you know, as you looked at the industry and I'm sure you guys have had these discussions on, you know, what's the pricing model and, you know, how do we compete against these, these other entities? Um, I always viewed Mountainside as a, as a company where you go in and there's an experience and somebody's got to pay for that. There's great Group X. There's, you know, from being from New York, it's kind of like an Equinox in the desert. It's yeah, basically how analogy. I feel about it. That's a great analogy. Um, for the price that I could say, well, if you if you went a dollar lower, like you're just giving money to someone, like, you know, they, they should be paying more. So how, how did you guys think about basically like owning the middle and kind of owning a little more of the higher end? Um, you know, maybe it's not as high as a Ganey Ranch or, you know, country right. club, but basically, you know, staying where you are and saying, look, I feel this, this is right. I'm delivering what I want to deliver. Um, so maybe talk about that as the noise kind of flows in and out of the markets. Well, I think it's funny. It's something that established a long time ago with the kind of the, the, the evolution of World Gym here and Gold's Gym here. And then just kind of how that evolved out of the, this market in some sense. And, and we just kept kind of floating. Um, kind of upward in our design and then our value add. And I think those are the two things that kept just moving forward to where by the time Craig got in the chair, we were at this certain box size and certain value add. And it just became our mantra is that we were just going to keep hammering, you know, value mm -hmm. into this very, very refined, nice box. And uh, I think Craig coined the term, we're going to live at the top of the middle. And mm -hmm. from there, the seas just kind of parted because it really most of the competitors that have been in this market have come in towards the bottom in the way their price points. And that's what they talk about. We just don't. Um, and we, we, we live in this spot and we just keep every day trying to add value to that box and not really increase the price point and, and get to a point where we price ourselves out of top of the middle. Right. Um, it, 
Is that probably fair to say? Yeah, I would totally agree. And, and I think there's a term out there called brand equity. Sure. And, and across uh, the, 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 this country and the millions of industries, uh, there, you really can't put enough emphasis on brand equity. Mm -hmm. And brand equity at Mountainside is strong group fitness, strong child care, uh, very clean facilities, very open, fa inviting mm -hmm. facilities with a front desk staff that's very friendly and, and knows who you are. That's the brand equity. And, and to Tom's credit, 20 years ago, he started it and it yeah. moved on and moved on. But standing here 20 years later, there's real brand equity in the mountainside name. And it stands for the, the, the upper end of the middle. I like that term. I haven't used that, but I'm going to if, if you guys <laughs> let me. The, the one thing, um, you know, and, and uh, my day job is obviously doing investment banking, so I get calls from a lot of investment groups, and they say, hey, I want to play on the Planet Fitness side, or I want to play at the Orange Theory. I want to basically play, like, the, the Spectrum, and I want to play the two the two sides of the Spectrum. Um, I'm concerned about being in the middle. And the one thing that I always harp on with them is that, and most of them are from New York or Boston, and I'm like, you have to realize that not everybody has a nanny. OK, like the daycare in this business and the group X programs and giving some a woman the ability or a man the ability to bring their kid and drop them off and have a good experience and meet their friends there. Like you're not getting that at Orange Theory because there's no room to, to hang out and you're not getting that at Planet Fitness because there's no daycare and there's no there's no showers that you want to hang out in. So when someone says, well, what's going on with the middle market? I'm like, the middle market's back and it's not going away. So maybe kind of chime in on, on your thoughts on that, just, give, you know, given that you're in it day to day. Yeah, I think there's, um, with our with our type, with our brand, the way we deliver, you know, the, the fitness product, there's more moving parts. You know, we do have intensive childcare. I think that's it's really important for our brand and what we we're talking about here just earlier uh, to where we feel like we want the kids to cry when they're leaving. Not when they're coming. It's important. It's literally important because that's a big part of your day is to try to get mom and dad there. And, and seriously, we use the kids and their enjoyment of the child care to be that. And as far as uh, the kids that we have working there and, and how that is and the opportunities that they have to have fun in the child care. Then we go to the group fitness and we really decided to treat all of our group fitness studios. We have three in each club um, and 80 classes per club um, in, in, in the studios as if we were owning those as separate studios, a yoga studio, a cycle studio, a group X studio on their own in an island, just because we want that brand, that look, that feel to, to compete with anything out there on its studio. But you don't necessarily see in a, in a health club that has a lot of volume. Then we progressed out to the floor and making sure that our really strength offering is pretty progressive. We added a lot of areas that um, we, we see in uh, more of studio type of stuff, some core training areas, um, you know, big areas for sledding and, and just, you know, transitional workouts. On the topic of childcare, uh, we've got 60 sales representatives. A lot of them have, are young and have young energy. And I listened to them and one, one of them coined a phrase and, and I, I echo it all the time is, and that is your child will become your best workout partner. Hmm. And he was dead on wow. that if the I kid like likes coming to <laughs> childcare, they will push you to get to the gym. And, and that, that takes a page out of Tom's book that we've built the type of child care that kids do like to come to, and they are good workout partners for the adult. Yeah, that's great. Actually, last weekend I was at a, I was doing a uh, cycling class in New York, and I was definitely sitting, I was definitely biking next to a 12 year old, but her, her mother was in the front row. So I basically became this, this kid's workout partner, which I wasn't that cool with. But anyway, just as an aside, I think that's a great, you know, an analogy of like, you know, let, let's build these kids up so they're exposed to the club. And maybe, you know, as, you, as it goes forward, maybe there's even more, you know, kids programming that's actually, you know, based on, you know, doing exercises and stretching and yoga. Is that, is that something you guys are thinking about? Well, we, in a lot of the clubs, we do have uh, kids selectorize equipment in, yeah. in the in the child care. So we've made that part of our kind of programming and how uh -huh. we want to make sure that, hey, they can be fit, too, even though they're, you know, seven running around there, not just in front of, you know, the screen playing Minecraft or, you know, watching a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I got to get my uh, nephew Although we offer off that of Fortnite. Uh, <laughs> Fortnite. Like Fortnite is not going to make you better at, at hitting a lefty layup. It's just not. It's not happening. So, Craig, go back to the, the part about the energy and the attitude. And I know you guys, at this point, you're up to like 1,400 employees. Um, you know, how do you identify those people? How do you make sure that they understand, like, look, we're building a business. This business is growing. There's opportunities for you. And this isn't like a front desk job. And, you know, we're, we're actually looking to grow you as an individual. And we're looking to, to basically find the best people 
you know, in this side of the market. So maybe just give us a little lens into how you think about hiring and, and retaining the best people. Yeah, so, so I think when I came on board, we really started driving home our concept and this concept-based selling. I want everybody from front desk to the, the maintenance tech to the child care to understand our concept is 17 clubs included in your membership. Mm -hmm. there, 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 there's no one-off pricing. 17 clubs included in your membership. Free towel service included in your membership. Uh, full service locker rooms included in your membership. 80 group fitness classes included in your membership. And if you spread that knowledge and that vernacular amongst all of your staff, at, at a minimum, all 1,400 are gonna at least be preaching the, the same message. But then you're also going to start to see the ones who rise to the top, the ones who preach it just a little better, a right. little stronger. And then when we walk into the clubs, we spend a lot of time with them. We spend a lot of time behind the front counter, spend a lot of time in the GM's office, in the child care, with the maintenance techs. The maintenance, the maintenance techs know us and we know them. There's a maintenance tech at every location. So that was something Tom uh, put in place a long time ago. And I always say during a tour, point that out to the prospect because a maintenance tech at every location the, the, the feature is that they are here. The benefit is they are here to fix equipment. Right. And equipment so at Mountainside right. is not down very often. And the value is that when you walk in, you have equipment that works. So this concept-based selling has been spread amongst all 1,400, and then you start to see the energy because they're all at the same level. They all know the same stuff, but the, the cream always rises to the top. So you start to see the energy that comes at them. Mm -hmm. And that Mountainside Fitness is a real career path. Right now, of our 17 general managers, 16 of them have been with us for more than two years. That's great. You know, and probably 12 of them have been with us for more than five years. So we've really got a team of general managers who were built homegrown inside the mountainside walls. And a lot of them within the past four years really driving home this concept. So when they're talking to the, the public at large and the members, they're delivering the consistent message mm -hmm. that, that was given to them by the corporate team. I think it's interesting that, you know, anybody can buy a treadmill. I mean, truly, and, and uh, you know, anything else inside the, the, the facility, so to speak. I just don't think you can teach everybody to be friendly and outgoing and have the desire to make somebody want to come. And I think people are loyal to people, not equipment. And the, and the greater we can um, show that to everybody and make sure that you're having fun as, as somebody working on Mountainside and you have an outgoing personality, we win. It's just that simple because people are loyal to people and, and mm -hmm. they want to be in a place where people are happy and having fun and enjoy their job. I think that's been our, you know, we're all kind of kids at heart a little bit. You know, we yeah, don't want to take it too obviously. seriously. Yeah. You know, I'm playing on houses money for the last 30 years, so I don't want to take it too seriously. I don't think they they take it so seriously where it's this high driving pressure. And I think that's a big success. For we'll, us. We'll, um, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll get to um, as, as you look at the industry, say, OK, like what what re, what metrics are you playing? So like we, we say that the planets are playing a return on marketing and parking and you know, the, the high ends are basically playing like a uh, Guinea ranch might be playing a return on invested capital. So I've got, you know, this big real estate project. Uh, and I say I always said that the, the middle, which I'm now going to use as the top of the middle, is like return on relationships. And like just say like that's you. But you're basically like an ROR is like the new term that, that I've tried to coin with some Gold's Gym guys a long time ago. I said, does everyone here know? the name of their top group exercise instructor because they basically account for probably three or 400 memberships. Yeah. So you better know their name and you better care what they, what they need and what they think. So it seems like you're building a business that's, you know, people first. And then th those people are basically allow you to grow because that's not an operational risk going forward. Cause you got 16 people that are looking for, you know, some additional opportunities that, that how you think about your growth is like when we're ready and how the, the team's built. Absolutely. You know, we know when we're ready and we know with, you know, Mario always says our chief operating officer, we know who we have in our pipeline of just, mm -hmm. you know, who's next up. And we, we talk about that a lot and, and just out of the company vibe and how that moves forward as we decide to grow. And one interesting thing about this business is I think all club operators put a lot of emphasis on their general managers. They have GM meetings weekly, <laughs> monthly, bi-monthly. They have a lot of GM meetings. Mm -hmm. What we've rolled out in the past Four, four or five years is child care managers come to the corporate office every two months and we talk to child care managers about child care. 
group fitness instructors have a meeting three times a year where they all come in, star instructors teach star instructor classes, and all the instructors hear from Tom, myself, the directors of group fitness. So they're being put on a spotlight three times a year. Uh, the assistant general managers, we've taken them recently to baseball games, to charity events where we buy two tables, yeah, expensive, you know what they are, yeah, to 5,000 sure. a table, 10,000 a table. We take the assistant managers to those events. And that's a, that's been a, a real fun change in the industry as a whole, is we highlight child care managers, assistant managers, fitness instructors. Uh, the maintenance techs also got a baseball game this past summer in a suite. Nice. Uh, that, I think that's all part of this return on relationship, because we do know th those people who are really make, make it, carrying the flag and having the relationship be that much more valuable for the members. And, and then as you guys look at, um, you know, obviously your finance guys like we are. So we look at, you know, what's your revenue per square foot and, you know, attrition. How much do you guys look at um, whether it's quantifiable or not when someone says, you know, you changed my life or, or you know, my net promoter score is this high or, you know, I've got 100 people that did a member referral. Like it wasn't because of the gift card, you know, that might have been like the, the reason that got them to actually take the action. But they took the action because they're they feel comfortable saying, look, I this benefits me and it will benefit you. So how do you guys think about like the financial metrics and like the maybe the, the, the qualitative or just what you hear? Well, I think that was kind of how we were able to grow. I think, you know, it, someone said we were talking, they were talking about Tom Brady the other day, the uh, quarterback for the Patriots, and how the buy-in is so so strong in, in the teammates. I think for us, that's a big deal with our members. They, they've got to be buy-in. And buy-in is, is whatever the success that it was for them and why they showed up. And the better we do at highlighting them and making sure that we're, you know, we're engaged in that, they build a brand for us. And, and they help build that solid foundation that really takes on its own life. As we go in and we kind of pull the levers, the little things upstairs to do whatever, they're building the brand and because they're having success. And they're doing it organically through their friends um, and the people they meet in the clubs and through their own successes. Got it. So, so where do we go from here? So we got 17 locations. You know, what, what's your vision of, uh, of the future? Do we, uh, you know, fill, fill out the rest of Arizona and then move to some adjacent markets, you know, as the team's ready? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think we, we just acquired another, uh, a really kind of a unique property here in Paradise Valley, uh, Scottsdale border that we can start construction on in a few months. So that's a big deal for us. Uh, we've got two other spots that we're looking, you know, to take down here in the next few months. And then, yeah, we have interest in other markets and you know, we've identified, you know, a few middle markets. Uh, and, and interesting enough, we've created three brands. We have our big box, which is 40,000 feet. We have a kind of a mid-level box, which is we call our Platinum Series, which rounds about 17,000 feet um, to 18,000 feet. And then something a little bit smaller we call our Executive that we just opened up that um, allows us to play in different markets with different pieces of our puzzle to get the brand out there. And I think that's what we want to explore here in the next five years and, and, and unleash all those into other markets that maybe you haven't seen those yet. Got it. And, and as you grow is a strategy to, to basically continue to, to work the relationships of real estate developers that are working on new properties and, you know, have you guys as the anchor tenant? Is it to look for, um, you know, real estate that's, uh, that there's opportunities where some of the big retail boxes are moving out and, you know, they're, they're trying to fill a big spot? You know, how do you guys think about the opportunity? Is it opportunistic or is it, you know, more like, look, I want to have these certain types of offerings you know i've been more of an you know as far as my career it's more more opportunistic i didn't mm -hmm. really put goals out there to be the biggest you know to have 15 20 30 it just kind of has happened along the way depending on the opportunities like what we just did yeah. and what we will do and we, we just continually to look for opportunities whether they're ground ups whether they're acquisitions whether they're uh, big boxes you know that have gone dark and see if it makes sense in our brand and what we want to do then we would attack and, and go in there you absolutely would Right. And I think on the expansion side, it, it's possible that some of it's going to be driven by the corporate relationships that we've established here in Phoenix and the West. You know, the, the Phoenix and the West, Tucson, San Diego, Vegas, we're all pretty well connected. We're all one hour flights away. And a lot of businesses dabble in, in, in each of those cities mm -hmm. and those states. And so we have some really strong relationships with the, uh, the two or three major hospitals who not only are Phoenix-based hospitals, but they're San Diego, Vegas, Tucson-based hospitals. Those relationships 
might uh, what be what leads us mm -hmm. to the next opportunity. There's some major corporations who are continuing to go deeper and deeper with it. When you talk about the upper end of the market, the middle market, it's these this, these corporate relationships. There, there's there's a lot of depth there. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of depth of being able to walk into a 10,000 employee company or a 10,000 employee branch of a major company here in Phoenix and be able to serve them a corporate pricing opportunity at Mountainside that allows the front end receptionist world to attend Mountainside at our price point and even the C-level guys to come in and partake in Mountainside. So the, the, the corporate growth over the past four years has been very strong. You know, mm -hmm. I'm probably putting out three to five corporate flyers per week here in Metro Phoenix, and we've really seen a lot of the growth over the past four or five years on the back of it. And I do believe that's what's going to potentially be the springboard into another marketplace as we continue to firm up these hospital, healthcare insurance, and major corporation relationships. Great, and you've got affiliations with the with the sports teams here as well. Uh, you want to talk about that before we uh, before we end our uh, our podcast yeah, here because I, I think it's important. You know, it's interesting. We've got we've, we've got some really interesting affiliations that we kind of just all grew up together. You know, right. starting with the Diamondbacks. I've always said they've been like my big brother going through, and just just the way their organization is, uh, my involvement with the actual team and the organization, our involvement in the stadium with the club there. Right. Um, so we've always been close, and, and then we really I started my career uh, with a partnership with the Suns uh, when the actual Suns dance team was created, they came into Mountainside and used us to actually do all the routines and mm -hmm. as their home. So that has been a relationship we've had forever um, and just in our brand starting here together. And then recently, uh, we have a partnership with the Cardinals, um, both with the team and the cheerleaders and, and as their exclusive health club. And uh, we're real proud of that. And then lastly, Cox Communications. I think that's been a big win for us. At, and and there's brand across the country, but how they really took on to uh, Mountainside and highlighted us to all the other uh, brands they have throughout not only Arizona, but the United States. And they're proud to, as far as delivering what they do in Cox business. So we were pretty excited about the way they looked at us and that. So I think those relationships, plus our charity relationships with Make-A-Wish and a Muscular Dystrophy Association stuff here in Arizona have made us kind of, the partnership has been really who we are in the community, which is part of, part of that kind of organic, you know, brand equity that's happening from, you know, the ground up, not just going out there and buying a box and just, you know, putting equipment in. Great. Well, congrats on the uh, success. Thank so you. from Mountainside Fitness, top of the middle, Scottsdale, Arizona, looking to uh, continue to grow and, and grow the brand equity and uh, get people results in Arizona and the rest of the Southwest. Gentlemen, thank you for being on the show. Pete, thank you. Thank you, Pete.